Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections. I believe this is my fifth video. Anyway, I hope you all have been doing well. Let's jump right into this. And my god, I really love the music for this. God, it's so good. Oof. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Back to it. Alright. Quinn. Quinn can't choose when he has premonitions or what they're about. The whole point of this was supposed to figure out how to manage all this psychic crap. Is that the case for all of you? Pretty much. Welcome to the club. The deer scowls as he slumps back into his seat, expressing a rare show of defeat. It's been a little rough. Thankfully, we have each other to lean on to make things easier. It hadn't really occurred to me what they that they might not be happy about their own situation. Normally in any of the stories I've read, having basically superpowers had little to no downsides. But, if they don't really have control of them, that'd just be a world of inconvenience. How haven't they been caught or uplifted by some secret organi government organization yet? Hold up, let's see. Let's see. There we go. I think I can almost understand the urgency to include me. How many people could they even talk to about this? It must be hard. It is sometimes. It's been difficult in different ways for all of us. But we're making the most of it. More than anything, Mason, we're, hope we're just hoping you'll be open-minded enough to join us. Even if you don't realize it yet, sooner or later you'll discover whatever your psychic ability is. We can help you when that time comes. Hell yeah, I'm gonna join you. So, what would I need to do? Sign some sort of blood oath or something? Wh what? No! You just join us for our meetings, that's it. Occasionally, you might try to do something together as a group. What Zoe, what Zoe means to say is that on occasion, she will force us together to various uncomfortable activities. Oh, come on, it's never that bad. Please. I had a sunburn for weeks after that beach expedition you put us through. I thought it was pretty memorable. I'd never been to the beach before. Exactly. Quinn gets it. Outside of a little sunburn and Jude being too much of a grump to go swimming, it was a blast. I told you, I don't have a good pair of trunks for the beach. Crazy as it sounds, I agree with Aiden. It was a dumb trip. And I'm sorry you feel that way, Jude. To think I convinced myself you had enjoyed collecting all of those seashells. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, not like Mara was much else to do. The others laugh while Jude simply sits back with a huff. It's strange. I wasn't sure if they were even friends before, but now they're all bantering like they've known each other for ages. It feels less tense than before, as if the previous revelation of the supernatural abilities had never even happened. Maybe that's why they really spend time together, because it's the only time they feel normal. They aren't necessarily bad people, they're strange for sure, but everyone has their quirks. Plus, if Zoe's right about me, then maybe it isn't the worst idea to join them. Though, that small voice in the back of my head telling me to get up and leave hasn't quite gone away yet. Alright, sure. I think I get it. Huh? Huh? I might not be sure about all this psychic business, in fact I still think it's pretty crazy. Despite that, you haven't given me much reason not to believe you. I'm hoping you can give me a bit more time to adjust to all of this. Of course, Mason. In that case, without further ado, welcome to the Psychic Concord. Concord? It's Zoe's word of the week. It means, uh, it means a few different things, but she's using it as a synonym to friendship. What's the point of using complicated words like that? Just say what you mean. Some people can't be as direct as you, Jude. Sounds like another mug broke. What do you... <laughs> no more than a couple seconds after he spoke, the sound of something shattering could be heard from the kitchen area. The large panther simply sighs, shaking his head in disappointment. You know that girl is far too ditzy for her own good. Either fire her or keep her out of your kitchen. 
Aiden, as much as I value your input, I hope you'll leave the management of my cafe to me. Anyway, as fun as this all was, I'm afraid I have to get back there. Jude, do you think you'd be willing to put in an extra shift? Sure. You know I'd never say no to no more hours. You know I'd never say no to more hours. You work here? Part-time, but I'm always picking up a shift here and there when Elliot needs me. Somehow, I can't even picture the big buck working in the service industry. I thought of him greeting customers with a large smile. No, I simply can't imagine it. Sorry, guys. I forgot to frickin' mute telegram. Jude. Jude excuses himself and follows Elliot into the kitchen. There were four. I'm sorry. There were four. I'll dearly miss Jude, but I'm excited to talk with you more, Mason. Was that a pun? Aiden rolls his eyes so hard I think they might roll back into his skull. Meanwhile, Zoe simply, say, simply shakes her head. Based on the reactions, this might be a regular occurrence. It's possible that Quinn might simply be a terrible joke enthusiast. Or at least I would be, but honestly, this might be good timing. I actually had something else I needed to take care of today. What do you mean? When I texted everybody, you said you'd be free today. I mean, yeah, I am, provided I skip class to be here. It's the first week of the semester, and you're already skipping class classes, Quincy? Oh! I told you not to call me that! Quinn has an expression I've never seen, be seen on his face before. Somehow it's even more intimidating when considering I've rarely seen him without a stupid grin across his mug. It would seem he gets triggered by someone saying his full name, though I'm not sure why. Please, I'll go now, okay? I was just excited and I figured it was another introduction. I would have seen the instructor later to get the syllabus. You can't be skipping class, Quinn. What if an actual emergency occurs and you need those days? Geez, I get it. It's not for another hour. I'll be able to make it, no problem. Hmm. Well, it'll probably go faster if we get going now. You're going to? I have to get preparations started for cleanup after the club fair. We don't know when the frat wave will pass through this time around, but we have to be prepared for those Neanderthal pledges. If it's such a problem, couldn't you just report it? We ha- We have, however, for some asinine reason, the Dean refuses to do anything. He stated the fraternities were just living out their youth. It's absurd, but there's nothing more I can do. What about you, Mason? Everyone seems to be going their separate ways. What are you going to do? That's a good question. I do have a class later today, but I don't have to head back quite yet. I could stay here, maybe see how Jude acts at work, actually try some of the baked goods and chat with Elliot. Alternatively, I could head to campus early with Quinn and Aiden. It never hurts to be early to class. Uh, I think I'll head back to school. Hmm. I mean, I, I would like to spend more time with these two. They kind of skipped out earlier, so let's see. I think I'll join you guys on the walk back. My class isn't until later, but if I don't come up with anything else, I can just head back to my room. Sequin? Ah. <clears throat> Sequin? Mason here is taking his study seriously, and you should be too. I'll get right on it, Mom. Hey, I'll walk you I'll back I'll walk back with you guys too. Probably for the best before I get another espresso. We all motion towards the exit. To the, we all motion towards the exit to the cafe. Elliot waves a goodbye while sim while Jude simply stares at us as we leave. Thankfully, the sun is out and shining today. The slight chill I felt this morning has become a comfortably cool breeze. We begin walking towards the campus. Quinn and Zoe are chattering away while Aiden trails behind us. Seriously, it was the drunkest I've ever been. I don't know, Zoe. Do you remember Jude's last birthday? Correction, it's the drunkest I can remember being. I'm glad I had to be sober. It was some of the funniest stuff I'd ever seen. Seriously, she gave Jude a lap dance. Hey, I bet I was pretty sexy. Considering you could barely keep your balance and Jude was radiating discomfort, I don't think sexy is the word I'd use. Speaking of, it's coming up again in a few weeks. We should celebrate. The man is turning 24. Do we really need to celebrate every birthday? Yes, because who knows how many more we'll get to celebrate together. We're graduating next year, Aiden. Besides, I know why you really don't want to celebrate. Aiden shifts in what I can only assume is discomfort. 
Why do you not like parties or something? I mean, sorry. Why? Do you not like parties or something? Aiden doesn't like spending too much time around Jude. Well, he doesn't exactly make it easy to spend time with him. That's true, but we all know it's more than that. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure you've probably noticed by now that Jude is a little intense. Okay, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Jude is... Well, it's not so much that he's intense, rather he's very passionate. It makes him and Aiden a little less compatible. Somehow I'm still not following. Are they trying to say Aiden's too reserved? Less compatible how? It's a burden It's a burden of my empathetic abilities. I tend to get a bit swept up in strong waves of emotion. So because Jude tends to feel things so strongly, it affects you? Exactly. It's why I find myself becoming more argumentative around Jude. I still remember when you screamed at that mom on the airplane. Well, her child was crying and she was just idly watching a movie. Outside of being neglectful, I was doing everyone on the plane a service. Somehow I think more people just assumed you were a pompous ass who couldn't handle sitting in front of a crying baby. I wouldn't have had to do that if you'd not insisted that we give, old, that, we give that older couple our first class tickets. Regardless of your, issue, of your issues, Aiden, you have to be there. You too, Mason. I've got the perfect plan this year. I have to come? I don't even know what to bring. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. You've only just met, so chances are anything you got him would work. You don't just... You don't get him what Elliot got him two years ago. What did Elliot get him? A book with a series of pickup lines and date ideas. Yeah, I got Elliot. I get Elliot was trying to nudge Jude to go out there, but there isn't a universe he was ever going to use that. So, what was the plan this year? It's a secret. If it's a secret, how exactly do you prepare appropriately? Don't worry. All of the preparations will be made ahead of time. How cryptic. I'm not too sure how I feel about a mystery birthday party. Jude doesn't strike me as someone who would enjoy a surprise party. Although, if he really does know what's about to happen, I can't imagine that kind of party would work either. Oh, wait, hang on, I need to stop here to grab a bite. Quinn points to a small cat to a small corner store. It looks like a, it looks a little bit run down. Really, Quinn? Couldn't you wait until after your class? No, Aiden, I really can't. I'm hungry, and there's only one thing that would fill me up right now. Please don't say instant... Instant noodles! Hey, my man! Before Aiden can protest further, the bunny bounced onwards to the, into the small store. Aiden simply stands there, shaking his head, while Zoe simply chuckles as if this was an un if this this was an expected outcome of our trip. Sorry, I'm flubbing my words so much, guys. I'm really hungry right now. <laughs> One of us should probably go in there, just to make sure he doesn't take too long. Ah, gosh, so many choices. Oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? Hmm. You're right, I'll go. I'll go. Yep. Well, we'll be here when you're done. Just try not to take too long. I nod and quickly move to catch up to the rabbit ahead of me. Entering the small store, the first thing I notice is the strong stench of tobacco. It's almost nauseating. I see Quinn moving down one of the small aisles and pursue him. Turning the corner, I see him duck down looking at various packages. He turns to me holding two instant ramen noodle cups. Hey, Mason, help me out. Which flavor should I get? On one hand, I love the chili flavor. On the other, I've never tried the lime one. I am not too knowledgeable on the subject, but I'm sure I can suggest one. Get both! If you don't like the lime flavor, you could always get the chili as a backup. Well, that's definitely a logical solution. Usually I try not to overspend, but I can't pass this up. Overspend? They're like 99 cent cups of noodles. After resolving to get both cups of noodles, Quinn moves further into the store towards the drink section. So, how are you holding up? What do you mean? You know, with all of us being crazy people with otherworldly powers. Oh, I mean, I guess fine? Thinking about it, I had calmed down quite a bit from the initial shock. It's certainly still strange to me, yet I don't exactly feel repulsed by it. 
You don't think we're monsters about to sprout third eyes or tentacles or something. Hmm. Well, if you do, I'll be sure to run away. For now, though, I think I'm safe to learn more about all of this. Well, I'm glad we didn't scare you off. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to quick save this. Yes! Another end to a nice episode. I really enjoy this game. Ah, uh, a new episode will be coming out shortly. Okay, so the next couple days will not have any videos because I'm going to be working my ass off quite a bit. Got really long... Really, the next two days are going to be short, but I'm going to have a really, really long day coming up. So, mm, that'll be the big one. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.